our first presenter is a professor of physics and astronomy at the University of Southern California, where he develops theoretical tools for studying the basic fabric of nature. He's also a noted science communicator and writer. Dr. Clifford Johnson serves as a scientific advisor for movies and TV, and most recently worked on the upcoming Thor Ragnarok. He's written and drawn a graphic novel featuring science called The Dialogues, which MIT Press is going to publish next month. So I say we see how graphic he can get about the nature of the universe tonight in five minutes or less. Everybody give a big round of applause to Dr. Clifford Johnson. So um, as a scientist, I, I feel it's really important to communicate what scientists do to the general public. And uh, that's part of why we're here. And um, one of the things I like to do as well is to find new ways to communicate and engage scientific audiences. The world changes, we should change and keep up with it. So what I, what I think I have uh, to tell you today is a, a new kind of book which I've been working on. And it all goes back uh, many years. People have been asking me, uh, well, I like the way you explain things, so when are you going to write that non-expert book that people in my field are supposed to write? And uh, I really appreciated people asking me that, but I, it didn't feel urgent. I didn't want to write another one of those books that people in my field uh, are supposed to write. And, and there's nothing wrong with those books. It just didn't feel urgent. And so I didn't really uh, get into uh, doing it. And then what happened is that um, I realized actually about 18 years ago that actually there is a kind of book that I don't think is out there. And it's one that engages the audience by making them feel part of the conversation, that makes them feel that they're part of the, you know, that wonderful, joyful dance of investigating how our world works that is science, uh, and they feel part of it as well. And so conversations was the key. And I realized that a book celebrating the conversation about science would be an interesting thing to have out there in the literature. And so uh, I, I thought that'd be fun, uh, but then I put it on a shelf for a while and, and got on with other things. But every now and again, I would bring it out and tinker with the idea uh, and then put it back. And, and uh, about 10 years after, I realized actually that something significant had changed. And that was that the visual component of the book or the idea, had begun to grow and eat up the prose component. And it was driven by the following realization. Well, when people have scientific conversations, uh, typically you, you, you end up maybe scribbling an idea down or maybe a diagram or even an equation. Wouldn't it be nice to see those elements of the conversation? So, so that was one thing I thought would be interesting to incorporate. And then I realized, hey, wouldn't it be nice if you could actually see who's having these conversations? That would be really good. So you could actually have actual people, and then that might engage you some more, because you're wondering, who are these people? Uh, how did they come to meet? Why are they talking about this subject? And, and, and where's this conversation going to go? So that was an idea. So then I thought, ah, yeah, it would be fun to actually position them, uh, and you physically can see who these people are. We're social animals, so that, that can draw us in. And then I thought, well, where are these conversations actually taking place? Uh, is it in a lab? Is it in some special environment where special people go to do things? Yes, some aspects of science are done there, but also everywhere, right? People are having science conversations everywhere. Let's celebrate that, and let me show that in the book. Let me show the kinds of places which are just everyday places that we all are in having these conversations. So it's an invitation to have these conversations about science just out there in the world. And then I realized what I was doing. I wasn't doing a standard uh, um, science communication book with lots of prose and a few diagrams. No, the, the, the figures had eaten up the whole project and it was now a graphic book. It was a non-fiction graphic novel about physics, which is my field. And I realized that there's nothing like that out there. And so I got gripped by the idea. And as you know, when you're gripped by an idea, the only way to get free of it is just to implement the idea. So I just started drawing and uh, teaching myself how to improve my drawing. And sometime later, eight years later, uh, here's the book. So it actually comes out um, in a couple of weeks. And uh, if you choose to, to look at it, I hope you enjoy it. But let me say a little bit more, because there's something else about this which is very interesting. 
I realized that actually, yes, while I can show engagement, I can engage you with images and what people are writing and abstract figures and explain what those are, there's something else about graphic novels which is very important. I realized that comics are actually physics. What do I mean by that? Well, when you actually work with the language of comics, what do you do? You put down a sequence of images which are read in a certain order, and there's a convention for reading that, and that actually gets the reader engaged, like no other medium, it gets the reader engaged in creating space and time. That's what comics actually do. So space and time, that's physics. What better medium to talk about physics than a graphic novel where you're engaged in actively creating the, the space and the time? So that allows me to do things that I can do in no other medium. I can talk about contemporary physics ideas where space and time are breaking down and I can break down the panels to illustrate that. Or I can talk about the interior of a black hole and I can actually show that the black hole is changing the way you read the comic, which is sort of distorting the space and time of the reading space itself. And so there's some fun ideas, and uh, I hope uh, you might uh, find it interesting. <laughs>